Mike, you look a bit frazzled. What's going on? Thanks, doctor, for seeing me. What's going on? I'm seeing someone. I love her so much, but I gotta let her go. Does your, does your wife know? Yeah, she knows. She knows. <laughs> she knows. So I met her online. She was so sleek. So it took me five different times. I put down a hundred bucks each time, five times. And then there's these delays with COVID. She's supposed to be here in August, then September. Okay, okay. Then I got to finally date October 22nd. I was the happiest guy ever. But then it cost me 200 grand to get her in the country. And I finally got her. October 27th, she pulled up on my driveway. Two weeks now and she's got so many flaws. So many flaws, I gotta get rid of her. Classic, classic. Every time I'm with her, she just pushes me back in the seat. She's just pushing me back in the seat. So what's the problem? She doesn't stop, she doesn't stop. I'm smashing those brakes and she doesn't stop. I think I know this girl. What's her name? Plaid, Plaid, Plaid. What's up internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you my two week old Tesla Model S Plaid. And let's start off this video with obviously a launch because that's how all sweet videos start. So Plaid, drag strip mode, we're gonna lower and it's got a condition for peak performance and then I can go into cheetah mode and launch this bad boy. But we're on the street and that takes too long. So we'll just hit the plaid button and foot the brake and go. Oh. oh my God. So it's got 89% battery and I find that the real power actually is at 60 miles at our 100K. So I'll go up about a... Power is just... <laughs> this is crazy. This is a really bumpy road and I've been in cars that are way slower and way stiffer. I find the suspension pretty soft for what it is. I mean, considering the power it makes and the stability it makes, the faster I go, the more scared I get because the steering is very kind of a little bit loose. Okay, no drag mode, just foot the ground and Hard to breathe. It's not super direct, which is kind of scary. Yeah, should not be able to do that. It should just be very like tight. Maybe it's because I have 19s and not 21s, but I feel that the suspension is just too soft for what it is and how much power. So maybe Elon will press the button, give us race mode and give us a stiffer suspension. Yes. There are obviously outlets out there that you can get better brakes because the brakes are just a bit too spongy. Everybody I've taken for a ride and let them drive, they're like, this thing is a jet. And it is so true. The noise it makes is so awesome. Like, it's worth its price of admission. You can make all your money back by taking people for rides. Legitimately, there's people that do that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Today's October 29th, and I've actually ordered a 2022 Model S regular. Yes, after taking delivery of this Model S Plaid, I've ordered a 2022 Model S regular. Now, how does that make any sense? You see, I replaced my 2018 Audi R8 that I've had for three years that I loved. It cost 200 grand, it was so visceral, it looked awesome, it looked like it was worth the money. 
It drove amazing, and then I bought this, because I was always under the impression that 1,020 horsepower and 1050 torque and 1.990 to 60 and the quarter mile in 9.29 seconds and something with all this tech must be awesome. And it is, but it also isn't. So in July, I take my phone out, I go on tesla.com, and I put $100 down on the casino table and I order myself a black Tesla Plaid with 21 inch wheels. And then I thought to myself, hmm, 100 bucks. I can just order four more. And that's exactly what I did. I ordered a black one with 21s, a black one with 19s, a white one with 19s, and a white one with 21s, and then a gray one with 21s. And then voila, we all waited patiently for this Tesla Plaid to show up on Canadian soil. And guess what? We finally got the answer. August 22nd at 6 p.m., my Tesla Plaid had a VIN number and it was arriving. And then I could tell the dealer, I don't want the other four. I'm just gonna stick to this one and I'm super happy because it has 19s. I get to keep some mileage in my pocket because I save it with the 19s instead of the 21s. So I show up at 6 p.m. with my down payment that I put online with my check. Pick up my Tesla Plaid. But I didn't get it. You see, this is a 2021 and it drives me crazy because October 22nd, it should be a 2022, but it's not, it's a 2021. When I first saw the car, when I arrived at the dealership, I thought, man, this is like a Batmobile. It is the most beautiful, widest, sleekest looking thing I've ever seen. But then I took a deeper look because I knew in my mind that Tesla had a few imperfections when it comes to molding and trim and all that fun stuff, but they didn't fix it. So then they had to flatbed the car to my house five days later. And I didn't hear anything back from the person that I was dealing with at the dealership until the day they were actually dropping it off to me. Now they were kind enough to throw in a wall charger, retailed at $600 to make me happy, and that is great. But when you're spending $200,000 Canadian, you want a little bit more love. And did they fix the issues I thought they were gonna fix? No. Come take a look. There's lots of them. It's like they forgot to PDI the car when they walked up to it to open the handle to put whatever inside to clean it out. Would they not notice this? This is a lump right there. Water is getting underneath it. Hello, that's number one, the least of the problems. How do you not notice that? There are some small annoyances. I can clearly see this headliner inside is falling down and I can see all the insulation from standing right there. Another annoyance when I'm driving and I look in my side mirrors, I know that this door is lower than this panel and I can clearly see the edge of this panel on this side and I can't see it on that side. I also know that somebody put way too much buffing compound right here and it's annoying me because the paint is totally beaten up over there. But the problem with the molding is this door. This window is way higher over here. It sticks out and it creates all kinds of wind noise inside the car. It's so annoying that I have to turn the volume up in the car, which has an awesome sound system by the way. Thank you, Tesla. But the most dramatic, biggest issue that I can point out is the brakes. They suck. They totally suck. So much so that I messaged Tesla because with all these complaints I have, I couldn't give a, find a person to complain to. I have to go on the app and I have to put all the issues I had with my brand new car, which was seven of them, by the way. There's a few more, but I won't bore you. So I put it all in there. And the seventh question was, why are the brakes so bad? Do they need a work in time? Do I have to break them in? What's the deal with them? It's Wednesday today. I put that message in on Friday and I haven't heard anything back from Tesla. I had to book an appointment at the dealership on Friday to drop this car off, which is 100 kilometers or 60 miles away. Should I be buying a $200,000 car, Canadian, and driving it back to the dealership for all the issues that they gave me without checking it? Comment below. And while you're commenting below, please, please, please give us a sub. Here at Acceler, we try to give you the honest truth about the cars we review, including that Raptor back there. Now, this is the ninth year that they make the Model S, and in this version, they've made it longer, lighter, wider, and obviously faster. So I'm gonna talk about the front now and take a look at the front end. It looks pretty much the same as the last gen. It's just a little bit cleaner. They've redesigned the hood a little bit, and obviously the front bumper because this is the plaid version. This is also as jet black as possible. It doesn't have any sort of 3M film sort of you know protection on the front. This is out of the box, out of the factory, and it's still pretty good paint. I didn't find it too concerning. I did see a lot of things saying, well, in California, they can't use the best paint because of the laws or whatever, but Germany also has tough laws, so what's the deal with that? And why switch it up? Why make the tricoat white free and charge 2,000 bucks Canadian for a black one is beyond me. But on the front of it, it looks pretty awesome, and I can't really find any flaws with the front end.
It's pretty cool. Grab the phone, Tesla app, press open. You want to open it manually? Yes, and she pops up. This app is pretty awesome. I cannot complain. I walk into the car with the phone in my pocket, doors unlock, lights come on, I can pre-sense everything. It's the best thing ever. Now, underneath the hood here, or front is what they call it, I have my Tesla charger that comes with the vehicle. So this is not the full wall charger that I can show you guys in the back. It's the actual unit that comes with the vehicle. So when I open it up, like most electric vehicles, you just take this little converter here, you plug this into the car, and then based on what you're using, you can obviously use these little adapters, but this plugs into a typical 110 or 120 plug. You can buy the adapter for about $60 that actually plugs this or converts this piece into a dryer vent, so that's 240. So how much space do we have in the front of the Tesla Model S? There's 38 inches as far as length, there's 16 as far as width, and as far as depth, there's about 10. Now it does have this little cool hook, sort of spot for the hook so it's not flying around. It's pretty easy to see. This little button here is to eject yourself in case somebody gets stuck in this little small compartment. Well, it's just a law. As far as everything else goes, there's nothing really that pops here. It would be cool if Tesla, and I understand they're not gonna put insulation here because this is not an engine, but it'd be cool to have a little plaque here or something, something that's like cool, something cool and funky because the Raptor has a lot of it and it brings that brand, it brings you closer because Tesla is on a major high. But like everything else, something is gonna probably come down at some point and you have that connection. It's kind of cool to have these little trinkets in the car. At least that's what I think. I know there's a lot inside, but on the outside, we want a little bit more. Now, it does have a washer fluid that you can put in here. Pretty straightforward, it's plastic and there's a lot of plastic going on. But let's close this hood and talk about the side because that is where the action is. Oh God, come on, come on. Yeah, I gotta go to my app, I gotta unlock it, and then it opened, press it again, and it'll say, are you want to manually open it? Yes, it does it, and now I gotta go like that. $200,000. <clears throat> Conflicted is what I am. It locked. So moving along the side here, I really like the fact it's all black and all clean. There's no amber little lights here or little amber reflectors. It's super sleek and really wide body. Even in the front, it's a very wide body. This panel, this front fender is ultra wide. Really awesome to see. Now, as far as wheels go, I saved myself $6,000 by buying the 19s and not the 21s. Now these 19s are hubcaps, believe it or not. And when I found out I was getting hubcaps, I'm like, what? Hubcaps? Yes, you can actually pull these off and then there's rims behind it. Craziest things. Thank God they're not steelies. Now, you know, Accelerate, we like to always find out what's underneath. Is it a carpeted inner fender liner or is it plastic? And this is plastic. <laughs> now, as far as brakes go, I'm gonna tell you the positive about them. They are 15 inch on the front and 14.4 in the back. This thing weighs about 4,800 pounds, which is 200 pounds off the number that you can write off the whole car. Well, you can't write it off because it's 4,800 pounds. Now, I think the biggest issue I have with these brakes, besides the fact they don't actually fully stop, they're Brembo's, so what's up with that Brembo? But it's because it doesn't grab on initial press. You see, when I press the brakes, they're very soft. They don't have a full press when I push down, so it's the initial grab. And I've researched this car to death, like everybody else that had one in the US before we did in Canada, and they said it feels like you're playing air hockey, and there's just this slight layer of air on top of it. You try to press, and it's like you're pushing the air and not the brake pad, and that's how it feels. That's how I felt it. That's how a whole bunch of other dudes that drove the plaid or drive the plaid feel. So that's really the deal with the brakes. Hopefully, Elon, cross our fingers, gives us something more with our brakes because they're gonna give us something more because this does not have drag race mode. It's got drag strip mode, but it doesn't have a race mode. Hopefully we get that soon. Looking at the side here, this is a very long car. It's 116 and a half inches in length, which is nice and long and nice and comfortable. So you're just kind of puttering away down the street if you want to because it does have air suspension and it does have five different suspension height settings that you can pick in this car based on the speed you're driving. It even has something called cheetah stance, which is a drag strip mode. So when you have the drag strip mode, you can actually drop this thing down. It takes about 10 seconds to happen. That's pretty cool seeing this thing slam to the front. The only thing is though, when you're in drag strip mode, it takes between seven and 15 minutes to actually activate because it's cooling down the motor pieces inside. And speaking of motors, it's got carbon sleeved motors where you actually have 
one in the front and two in the back. They rotate at about 20,000 RPM. That's why it, Tesla claims you don't actually need to have a second gear like the Porsche Taycan does because that's Porsche's push. We have a second gear, so we have a higher top speed. Well, this thing does 200 miles an hour or 320 kilometers an hour. That is fast. So on the side here, you'll see how the placement of this rear camera is. It's pretty cool. It also starts where the center or shoulder line flows through. So all the way down, you have this one shoulder line that sort of dissipates over here and then starts again from the back and wraps around. So I like where this camera placement is. It's not underneath here. It's just nice and clean over there. Now, speaking of mirrors, these are fold in mirrors. They do fold in. They have this nice long bracket that holds it all together, but it doesn't have any lights on it. There's no indicators. Unless I'm blind, but definitely no indicators. Now it does have a massive glass roof over there. It's huge. It just looks like one panel. You can't actually tell that it's glass by looking at it from outside, but inside you can definitely tell it's nice and big and airy inside. Yes, just nice and black. There's no chrome and that is the coolest thing. It also has the fact that these door handles protract back in, they recess. So I press the button, it opens up and voila, I open up. And yes, it does have this weak, super weak puddle light on the bottom here. Tesla, what's up with that? And yes, no soft close. This door sucks. Before I flip this around, I wanna tell you guys how impressed I am though about the battery. This thing gives you about 625 kilometers on a full charge. And man, I was hammering this thing the first two days I got it, like hammering this thing. And even though I felt like I should have no battery left, I still had about half and I was impressed. Most other electric cars I've driven, when I'm hammering it, it just eats the battery. This thing is awesome. That is the biggest positive note that I felt besides the fact of it looking like a Batmobile. It was the battery, really impressed. This part of the video is happy and only good stuff because this is where Tesla shines and it starts right here. I can use my phone or I push this button and it opens. This is where the money's at. You see, we reviewed a whole bunch of electric vehicles and the charging, the infrastructure totally sucks, except for Tesla. They are awesome. I can put in my map, where is the closest supercharging station? It will tell me. I roll up to my spot, I plug it in, and the most expensive that it's cost me so far is $28. And that's given me almost 600 kilometers worth of range for 28 bucks. That is good when it comes to convenience. It is cheap. Gotta love this app, it is awesome. So on the back here, you will see that there's a massive rear diffuser on this plaid. It's so awesome, it just looks so futuristic. It is sweet. Moving up, it's all black. The Tesla is in black. This nice, large carbon fiber wing is nice. Nice little touches, really sweet. I just like the way this back end looks. The only thing in chrome here is obviously the Tesla badge and the fact that it says plaid right here. I would really like some of the first plaids that came out actually had the little plaid logo here, which was sick. And I want to have that in Canada, but apparently you can't get it. The only complaint I really have about the back visually or when I feel it is the quality of the build of these taillights. Now, I looked at the Model Y and it doesn't have this quality. It's a lot cleaner. There's no, like this looks really cheap. Like what's up with the injection mold? Terrible, especially on the side. And when I look at it at the top and have this tailgate open, you can see cracks in it. Now this does have a power height adjustable trunk. I hold it down, I hold this down, and it knows every time it has to open, it opens to this exact location. It binged, there we go. Now, Tesla uses a lot of magnets, so if you notice, when I put this over here, it's, it's very magnetized. Even on the inside, it's magnetized, just not on the trunk lid, and everything is suede, Alcantara, whatever you'd like to call it. It's just very nice, nice touch to the feel, really good luxury, really good quality product on the inside, which I didn't really expect when I got it. Like all this, this sill plate is nice. It's got this like anodized steel. It's just really nice and clean. And also there's a ton of room. Like check how much, how much room I have here. That's one thing about electric cars that you get. Just a ton of room. You can fit so many things inside. Now also the fit and finish and the feel this is nice and thick. As far as misalignment goes, like look at this kind of stuff. I guess you could be picky about it, but hey, I guess we just deal with it. And on the side here, again, a lot of space. So they have these buttons right here and that is to release the seats in the back. So this, these seats fold down by pulling these buttons, except they just release the lock. I actually still have to reach over and push this down. And yes, this is a very long car. So I'm basically putting my feet all over this back bumper and getting dirty. You would think with such a long car and with this huge fast back 
or sport back access that you simply just pull the button and it folds down. Now even the Audis, the Audi RS7, the S7, they're not powered. I still have to pull this, but it has a little bit of a spring system that it pushes down. I guess you have this thing to push it down. So the back seats of the 2021, ooh, nice. Model S Plaid. Hmm, I've actually never sat in the back of these seats. First time for everything, I guess. Very comfortable and it hugs me in. Really like Porsche Panamera-ish in the sense that each seat for them are like contoured to the person sitting here, not just a flat bench. It's very contoured, but it is a bit weird for my knees. There is a gap of this much between the bottom of my seat and my knees. I would have liked this to be a little bit higher. Now with this battery being 100 kilowatts and it taking up pretty much all the floor, it is a little bit higher. Even I notice that when I'm getting in, but in the back here, there's a ton of open space. This glass makes a huge, huge difference. Obviously black headliner, there's no doubt about that. These headrests are adjustable, which is different than the front. You see the front seats don't go up or down for the headrests, but the backs, as I just saw, does obviously one on each side, not the middle. The middle is fixed. Now, being in the back is important because think about it. This car, as I mentioned, does a quarter mile in 9.29 seconds. And the LaFerrari, which is the fastest, craziest car that costs like $2 million, does it at 9.7 seconds. This is fast in LaFerrari, and this has three seats in the back, which means you can fit five humans. That's what makes this different. And this is the main reason I bought it and sold the R8 because I can fit the family in here. But not to mention in the back, they have their own little TV screen where they can watch Netflix. They can adjust all the temperatures they want. They can do anything, heated seats, this side, that side, and even the middle. Yes, on my app, I can pull my app up and I can heat the middle seat. That is a bonus. The fact that I have a middle seat that I can heat up is money. As far as connectivity goes, of course, this has all the connectivity in the world. It's a Tesla. It also has two USB-Cs very cleanly hiding down there. It also has, when this thing does fold down, I can pull this thing down by pressing this button right here. And it does have nice clean carbon fiber where I have two cup holders here and I do have two full wireless charging pads where I can put my phones right there and it's nice, small little compartment there. Yep, so overall it feels pretty solid, nice and sporty. And it does have, obviously, I can pull these out and I do have little anchors on both sides for kids on this side and this side. Does it have a third anchor here? No, it doesn't. So just two on each side. And yeah, feels really good and quality back here. But the front headdress don't go up. Speaking of the front, let's go check it out. Front door time of the Tesla Model S Plaid. Somebody asked me the other day, how much is insurance? What does this car cost to insure? Well, compared to my 2018 Audi R8 Spider, that cost $1,600 to insure a year. Really cheap. I was super surprised when I called for a quote and obviously set it up. And this one was $2,400. So it's 50% more to insure this car over the Audi R8 Spider. Now to the door, let's talk about two things when you're getting into the car. Now, obviously the phone's on you, so you walk up to it, it automatically unlocks, it knows who you are, and it unlocks. So like a smart key, pretty straightforward stuff. But the two important pieces are, how is this in the snow or the, I guess essentially the really cold weather? How is it to open the door? Well, it's got two things kind of working against it. One is the handle. You see the handle is not a full handle. It actually pops out of the door because they're sort of nice and flush and clean when you're visually looking at the car. With built up ice, that door handle should be able to break through the ice because it seems like when it juts out, it's pretty strong. But the issue I find really is the door frame. This is a frameless door. And with the molding issues that I've had on this car so far when I just got it, I would say that it'll probably create a bit of a problem. Obviously the window has to pop down and it's got to find its way out. But I can see it's a really thick glass, so I don't think this glass is gonna break or anything like that because you have insulated windows in the front as well as in the back. So in the back, it's important to know that they are insulated. A lot of cars just give you insulated in the front, but not in the back. But on the inside of the door panel here, it has a lot of good pieces. The quality is very, very good. Compared to the Model Y, this is definitely premium. A lot of leather is here. There's no plastics. It's all nice and leather wrapped up. You got this nice carbon fiber trim and the way it sculpts under the door, it definitely does flow through all the way around the dash. Now it does have this nice gray stitching that flows through and obviously very simple switches and then a manual door unlock because there's a button here. You simply hit the button and the doors will open. All four doors are just done by a button but there is a safety manual release that you can pull up that automatically opens the door up. Now, you don't have any sort of specific names on these speakers, but there are 22 speakers in this car and the sound system is phenomenal. It is awesome, great sound system. 
Uh, what is strange though, if this is a plaid, shouldn't this material here be plaid? That would kind of make sense. I would think you'd have plaid on the inside of the door panel. So now I'm sitting in the seat and everything feels really good quality. Forget just touching the leather on top, like around the leathers and all the way on the side where the belt clips are here. There's no cloth, there's no like sort of, we're gonna save money, so we're gonna cut a strip out like this and put on the inside, like a lot of companies do that. And this one doesn't have it, it's just good quality. And the, and the memory foam that's underneath here is really good quality. So excellent, excellent job, Tesla. You're not cheaping out on the seats but you are cheaping out on some of the adjustability. There's no adjustability on these seats. Yes, they have lumbar support, but this car is 1,020 horsepower. You should have some sort of adjustability on the sides. Yes, I know that this car is not made for the track, but hello, people are gonna take corners with this thing. It's not only about going straight, or maybe it is, but I think that you should have some more bolstering on the side. So anyways, let's start over here. I'll close the door because I want to show you the quality of the door. Um, you can spend an extra 250 bucks or so and get an illuminated cell, but I didn't do that. Mine just says Model S and I can barely see it. And there we go. It should also say Model S plaid, right? You're spending that $80,000 Canadian extra to get the plaid. Like, that's a lot of money. You should give me that little piece. It's like the little tidbits, right? You want the tidbits besides just having a plaid button right on the dash. That's cool that's in the software, under controls. It's not obvious to my face. Anyways, let's start the door panel again and move along. So let's close this door and see how it sounds. It feels good. I can see that because I, can, I know all this padding and cladding makes it sound kind of solid. So I'm expecting that. Push the button. Feels really solid. So it, it makes me feel like a solid German car. There's something Nothing weak about this thing. I feel like it's good quality. And the dash and the layout is very minimalistic, just like all the other Teslas we reviewed. But this thing has a driver's display, a nice big driver's display with obviously the controversial yoke. So let's talk about yoke for one second. And forget how it looks and how it operates. I want to talk about one simple fact when you're driving it. And that is you don't get all the power in this car unless the yoke is straight. If you're turning and you're coming in or out of a corner, and you're on the throttle, well, there's not full power. You don't get the power there. You're not gonna get that nice monster slide that slides through. Maybe they'll change it when they add race mode. I don't know, but at the current moment, when I'm going out of a corner, I'm like, put to the ground, I'm like, yes, I can power out of this thing, but I just don't get it. I don't get the power. So the yoke has to be straight. So it's like we're getting this one trick pony deal. And I'm like, man, why are you giving me this? I want to be able to turn it on the throttle and have power. All right, foot on the ground. Nope, don't get full power. Now full power. Corner. All right, foot on the ground. Nope, not full power. Only on straightaways. All right, foot on the ground. Almost full power and full power. No, yes. So it's like, yes, no, yes, no, yes, full power. So like, let me decide. Just like I let you guys decide if this car is good looking or not. If this car is the best buy you can buy right now. That's for you guys to decide. Tesla, it's up to me to decide how much my foot goes down and how much power I want. But the main problems I find with this yoke, forget the fact that it looks super cool, it's just the turning ratio of it. It's not that I can't turn like this and over and then back, that can all work. But the problem is the ratio of it and we're kind of stuck with these like little quarter turns. So we're, we're turning and then we try to go over and then we, we're not turning anymore. So we're trying to bring it back. So you're, this hand's doing this like dance that's rather annoying. So they should change the steering ratio. If they change the steering ratio and it was just simply like this or like that, because remember, these steering wheels are really designed for Formula One. But the ratio in Formula One is basically like this and like this. In this car, it's like this. So that's the problem. Change the ratio and the yoke will work. Like right now I have the steering mode in sport, so it's, it's good, it's fairly firm. It's not overly hard on my hands. This feels like a, a standard mode for most German cars. So the suspension here, I'm in advanced. I put everything to as stiff as firm as possible. Sport firm, it's as low as you can, and it is comfortable. This is not, I would feel like you can have at least two more increments of firmness to go along with this. In soft, it's very soft, very comfortable, which makes total sense. Okay, now I turn, see now I'm like locked steering wheel on, on the power here, I had no power. I was on the gas right through there. Halfway through, I was on the gas, no power. And then I straighten my steering wheel and it gives me power. Why? Maybe that'll change the race mode, I don't know. But currently, when I turn the steering wheel and I'm on the throttle, no jam. As far as physical buttons on the yoke itself, it is annoying that the horn button is right there. It should really just be 
right here. Like, why not put it right there? The horn has some super cool features that I'll show you about when I jump into the main screen. But really, the horn should not be right next to cruise control, and it definitely shouldn't be right next to just washer fluid. Washing your windscreen should not be its own button. Underneath there's a speech button, pretty cool buttons to have. And then the other big problem is the left and right button. When I'm turning in a roundabout and I wanna make a right, my eyes look down at this steering wheel and it's like, okay, which is left and which is right? And I'm doing that all in motion. Now think about if you add three screaming kids in the back and then you have a car next to you that's not giving you the room and you're trying to figure out the lefts and rights, well, you're going around that circle again. There's just no two ways about it, unless you're driving like this because that's the only way it's done. So that's sort of a stupid, really stupid, stupid design. But as far as functionality of how it feels when I'm driving, when I'm going straight or just doing light turns, it's awesome. We're all driving, you know, at nine and three and it's like you're holding like a jet fighter and you're turning. Super cool, love that part. And of course, it's a really big talking point. When anybody gets in the car and they're looking at this yoke, they're like, this is the coolest thing ever. Now, this thing does have a vein through it. I can tell you that the glue is already delaminating from this rubber, and I can see a vein come right through this Tesla. I don't think this is part of the car because it'd be veins everywhere else, but there's only on the steering wheel between the L and the A. So if you have a Tesla Model S Plaid and you have a vein through your steering wheel, comment below. Another thing from the driver's perspective is the pedals. They are both stainless steel with a rubber sort of inserts in the pedals. So pretty normal standard stuff, except the dead pedal is all carpet. The dead pedal should be specifically aluminum because that is a sportier car, not just carpet. Now moving up in the dash here to the headliner, it's all really good quality. Again, I just complained about the fact that there's massive holes underneath here when I put my hand in, but the quality itself is really good. A nice use of magnets. Like they've used magnets in a lot of spots and even when these LEDs come on, they come on like softly and gently. So really good experience. And even the lighting here, it's simply just a touch. It's not just a, it's not totally touches. I still have to give it a click for it to come on or off but it's nice, I just feel like it's really good quality. Here they've done a really good job. Another use of the magnets is right here in the center console. Now the center console is very solid, very clean, nice carbon fiber done very well. Like this is the best carbon fiber I've seen on a car in a very long time. Obviously if you spend four or 500 K on a, on certain high-end cars, they might have a bit more detail, a bit more shine to it, but this is very uniform and clean. Now, if we start at the top here, this does have two ch wireless charging ports. You just leave your phone on this point here and it'll charge. You've got two in the front here, and again, as I showed you guys earlier, two in the back. Underneath here, you do have your hazard lights that you can see. And if you look deep enough, you will see that there is your gears. There's park, reverse, and drive. So you can see it right here. Because it's in case that the battery dies and you cannot put this in gear and it just can't find a way or something happens to the screen, you can actually force it and you can actually put it in gear. So when that doesn't work, this sort of illuminates and it works. Now you can also see the build quality here. You'll see at the bottom here, the edge is just done very poorly. You can clearly see all this white glue or white scratching right at the bottom. And at first I thought it was a film. So I tried to find if I could find a place to pull the film off, but there's no film. It's just, yeah, just didn't get checked. Not PDI'd. Moving along here for storage compartments, this is where it shows that they were thinking. They've got this nice long panel that comes about halfway to still leave your cup holders right here. And then if you want to extend this panel all the way down, you simply just push it again and then it flows all the way down. And it looks so clean. This is such a nice modern interior, just really good quality. Like it's not everything is good quality, but most of it is good quality. And that's really nice to see, especially in the center console. I push this forward again, and then there's a deeper compartment. So there's two sort of compartments. There's the first one where I can kind of put my phone and some change after it's done charging or keys or whatever. And then there's a deeper compartment for stuff like probably tissues, dental floss, that kind of stuff you can sort of shove in there or like snacks. And then again, you can slide this you can slide this cup holder back as well if you don't use cup holders. And then the cool part is this is where some extra other charging ports are. So there's two more USB-Cs down here and then a cigarette lighter hidden down there. So that's what you, and it's pretty deep. Like it's got a lot of room. It pretty much uses, utilizes all this room in the center console. So it's nice and wide, nice and deep. So there's enough storage in here. So there'd be no complaints for anybody complaining about storage. And then you have a separate co compartment underneath this glove box. And this is where magnets were used. So you can lift this up here and then you can just simply drop and you will see that magnets clip together. Now, when I look at this thing here, again, I can see that I can push it over here. It's like done by like two-sided tape or something, but it should be on a little bit tighter than that. It should be built into this piece and not just stuck on there after the fact. 
So the Tesla has three screens. It has a 17 inch screen, a 12.3 inch driver display, and then an eight inch in the back for the kiddies. So we'll take a deep drive in the 17 inch display and see what it gives you because it's very seamless. Like it's seamless to the dash now. It doesn't stick out like a nice big iPad. It feels like it's one with the car. So let's take a deep dive. Now remember, Tesla really controls it because you have to get the premium sort of plan so you can have all the data. You can use all the internet radios and all everything really works. Like it opens up the car when you spend the money. It's about 13 bucks a month or so depending again where you live. So let's start at the top. You have your little car button. Now to go into gear, it automatically knows, well this has a beta version essentially. When you pull up to a parking spot, it knows that when you wanna put the car, you get into it, sorry, the car will automatically reverse. It knows there's a barrier in front of you. Or if you go home every day in the same garage, it knows that you're home and it knows the only way to get out is backwards. So it automatically goes into backwards the second you hit the brake. It'll say tap for brake and then it automatically backs up. So that's how you put into gear. You just simply slide your hand up for forward and then slide your hand down for reverse. And then there's a park button right above it. So there's no park button, there's no button to press, there's no lever, it's all just done simply on this screen by sliding your finger up to go drive and then pulling your finger back to go reverse and then there's a parking brake button right here at the top you simply hit. Along the top here you can name your car as well as name your profile. So in my specific case it's called Accelerate and my name is Mike so it shows you right there. So when I hit the word Mike I can restore or save and I can put it in valet mode and I can adjust my driver profile settings. Moving along the top there I can, I can obviously download more software. I have home link for your garages. Above there I have different alerts so I can have all these different alerts or at least look at all the different alerts that happened with the car today whether it's regenerative braking um, or maybe there's a, a sentry issue which is basically somewhere around the car at night they sort of try to break in all the cameras will activate because remember this thing does have eight cameras and then next up is obviously Bluetooth and then of course your LTE for your phone because this does obviously connect to the phone through Bluetooth so first up is controls this is where you can lock the doors unlock the doors you can open up the charging port and you can essentially basically do all the main setup features with the car so like mirrors steering obviously putting on your wipers, which is really annoying. When it's raining and you get in the car initially, it doesn't wipe it off. You actually have to go in this menu, press the wiper button, and then you can choose which increment of wipers you want. Even if it's on auto, it will not just start up for you. It sort of has to find the right piece. Because remember, it still works on some of the old technology, like light deflection right here in the windscreen. So it knows there's, there's water when it first starts, but when there's water already, you actually have to go in the system, press wiper. So I wish they just changed this little thing to wiper on, boom, as opposed to just only spray. Anyways, I complained about that already. Window lock, raised suspension, fold mirrors, glove box, and child lock. So that kind of all makes sense to have in the screen, as well as brightness on the screen right here. So you can raise it and lower the brightness of the screen. And then it's recording. So do you want to do you want to have all the cameras record? We'll hit the button. It'll start automatically recording. So like dash cam all around the car, just in case you get into an accident. And then sentry mode, and then neutral. Neutral is important because obviously if you go to a car wash, like I did yesterday, you have to hold the button down for about two seconds, and then it sort of says yes, are you sure you want to go neutral? And then yes, you hold it, and then it'll go into neutral because there's no neutral in the car. So it's basically forward, backwards. So you have to activate neutral because remember, this is not a conventional car. Then next up is pedal and steering. This is probably the most used screen that I've used so far. Basically, you can adjust your acceleration from chill, sport, plaid. There is no race mode. So it's basically plaid is to the wall, and then you have drag strip mode. So when you hit drag strip mode, essentially it takes, as I mentioned earlier, it takes between seven and 15 minutes to fully activate while it cools down some of the motors or chills the motors and then gets into its cheetah stance in the front to give you like that crazy acceleration. And you hit the button on how to launch and here it shows you drag strip mode, firmly depress the pedal with your left foot and then press and hold the accelerator pedal with your right foot and then release the brake pedal. So pretty straightforward stuff, but it tells you in case you didn't know how to launch. Then next up is steering mode. You've got comfort, standard, and sport, and then auto turn signals off and auto cancel. So something I noticed is that when you indicate to go left or right, you hold it down for half a second very lightly and it gives one flash. Then you press it down a little bit more and you get a haptic feedback. You feel on your fingers like a little sort of buzz basically, and it tells you, yes, it's on, and then you have your signals that turn on. So in case you press it by accident, you hit it again, whether it's left or right, and it'll disengage. But what I have noticed is that at times, I just wanna leave it on, but the car knows you've shifted lanes and then it will shut off. So sometimes you have to actually think about when you're gonna put the signals on and when you're not gonna put the signals on because sometimes it's just really annoying. So I would put auto turn signals on off, so that way you just hit it and then it stays on forever and doesn't just auto cancel. 
And then shift, auto shift out of park is like I was telling you guys, when you back out of your garage, it automatically knows. So it's still in beta mode. And then next up is slip start. That's really good for the winter. Again, I just got the car, so I haven't used that yet. Now, the only thing, again, I mentioned on here you don't have is you don't have race mode. So it'd be cool to have a race mode, but apparently that's coming. Next up is suspension. Suspension is good to have because you can fully adjust this air suspension. Now, this air suspension has been reworked for the plaid. So it's specifically designed for the plaid, especially in the back. Uh, you've got comfort, auto, sport, and advanced. So uh, when you hit advanced, then you can adjust some of your damping settings. You can go from soft all the way to firm and comfort all the way to sport. So pretty, pretty consistent with every other brand that you can fully adjust it. Um, and then you can adjust the ride height. Do you want it on low, medium, high, or very high? Now high and very high can only be used up to certain speeds like most other cars. So it makes sense because you want to lift it in case you're going over a bumper a really huge curb, I guess. You're gonna take your Tesla Plaid over the curb. Next up is charging. This, as I mentioned, is pretty straightforward. You plug it in, it does everything it wants for you. It, it understands how much power can go in the car. You don't have to do anything except for find a Tesla supercharging station, plug it in, or plug it in at home. And this is where they really win. This battery, as I mentioned, is awesome. It gave, gave me, when I plugged it in, 625 kilometers, which is awesome. And it was $23 on the low side to $28, depending where I was in terms of mileage that the car already had. You can open your charge port, unlock your charge port, and you can pick the amount of voltage you want to accept when you pull in somewhere. So for at home, they say about 32 or so, or 34 is like kind of the good sweet spot. Uh, it draws in the right amount of current and all that stuff. So you can adjust it all by hitting this button. And you can also hold it here and you can choose how much current you want to have in the car. So kind of cool, it allows that. And then the most important thing, or at least scheduling, because when I'm showing up to somewhere, it's nice to schedule when I show up that the car, that somebody knows or the spot is vacant for me when I show up. I don't want to show up and then it's all full. The car will let me know that that supercharging station is available or not available because it has live maps. You see, that's super cool that it has live maps. So all that integration part, is really nice to have in a car like this because that's really what that real life feel is about. That's not specific to a plaid though. You can get that on the Model S. So that part is cool that it's not, they just save it for like the really expensive stuff. This is part of the infrastructure of Tesla. Next up is autopilot where you can have your cruise control distance where you can pick your distance basically over here. In most other cars, you guys are probably used to having it on the steering wheel. You can adjust your distance. In this specific case, you have to go in the system and you got to pick your cruise control distance. Now, some can say, well, that's kind of annoying. I'd like to just change it on the fly. But generally, we kind of all drive a similar fashion. Like I'm a pretty aggressive driver. I usually like to have it between one and two. I'm not the type of guy to have four or five because guys will just jump in front of you and steal your spot. So I'm always about really kind of, I won't say tailgating, but staying fairly tight. Maybe with the bad brakes, I might move it to three. Now it does have auto steer, which is by which is activated by hitting this button on the right stop on the right slider here. I hit it twice, and then it automatically activates on the way I've set it up. Now you can set up to single click or double click, so you can hit it once or hit it twice, depending how you'd like to set it up. And because the Tesla doesn't always want you to spend the ten thousand six hundred, they've offered a subscription model of one ninety nine. So far, it's not on this specific car, but I heard it's coming, or maybe in the U.S. it is. But in Canada, the car I have right here doesn't have it, and that's obviously done. You can hit it by just sliding this over. This is more of a preview it's not the full deal because I haven't spent the money moving down here you've got set speed so I can set a speed limit or my current speed and then you can choose an offset so it knows the speed in the area that you're driving you can set an offset so say it's a 50 zone you can choose to do 70 in that zone all by cruise control and then speed limit warning speed limit relative and then of course forward collision warning you can choose the detection system so all pretty straightforward stuff on most cars nowadays uh, lane departure avoidance that's all standard on this plaid and on the bottom here, you have four slider buttons that you can pick whether you want to have emergency lane departure avoidance, blind spot collision warning chime, automatic emergency braking, and then obstacle aware acceleration. So let's see what that's about. That says obstacle aware acceleration automatically limits acceleration and may apply the brakes if any obstacle is detected in front of the vehicle while you're driving at low speed. So I have that on. I figure, I figure you spend the money on all the tech, might as well have it all on until you actually hate it. Next up is locks and Tesla does a great job with this. They give you two physical car looking keys and then two physical card keys so you can just kind of take it and put it over here. So you can put on your key ring like a physical car key and then you can use your phone which is what I've been using since I got the car and you can add up to five different phones right here on the screen. It's super easy to use and this is where they kill it. No other brand comes close to how this is all integrated. Super easy to use. 
and it's got an awesome walk away feature. So the phone's in my pocket, I walk away from the car and it automatically locks. I get about 20 feet from the car and it locks. Really cool because my cars have been broken to in the past before. My truck just got broken to about two weeks ago and my, all my stuff was stolen and it was terrible. So I'm really happy they have this feature. I walk away from the car and it locks. Again, child lock, window lock, and then I can do something like auto present handles. So I walk up to the car and it presents the handles for me. I don't have to touch the car or touch the handle or touch around the car for the handle to present itself for me. Um, you can also pick driver unlock mode. Really important if you're at night by yourself and you're in sort of a, maybe a shadier area. You don't all the doors to unlock. You just have this door to unlock by itself. So really cool feature to have. Um, it also unlocks on park if you wanted to. And then you have a lock confirmation sound. And then you can close all the windows on lock. So kind of cool, pretty straightforward stuff. And then also you can have something called, basically if you leave your windows unlocked or your door unlocked, it'll tell you, it'll send you a notification if you don't know that. And it's got this really cool feature called car left open notification. Basically if your car is left open, so the door is left open, you'll get a notification saying, hey, your door's unlocked, what's up with that? And you can exclude your house. So if you're at home and you're cleaning the car, you're coming in and out, you don't have to keep getting notifications because you're at home. So it knows all that stuff. So it's really part of like your daily life really Tesla-ish, really the stuff that really draws people to the brand. Next up is lights, pretty straightforward stuff. It's basically your headlight functions, your dome lights, your ambient lights. So if we had ambient lights, it's just on or off. There's not a million different colors you can pick. It's just, do you want ambient lights on or do you want ambient lights off? The fact this is a really techie car, I'm surprised they don't have like 5,000 different colors or colors you can actually import to the system. That's strange. You can import up to five sounds when you hit a horn, which is like the coolest thing ever, and I'll get to that. But you'd think that on ambient lighting, they'd have different colors that you could pick. Well, they don't. It's just simply a button on or off, and that is it. You can put your headlights on after you exit, and you can have your auto high beam all selected right here. Next up is display. This is kind of cool because you adjust the brightness of everything to the degree. So you can have up to, up to 100% and as low as 35% in this specific case. You can also have different light appearances. So remember how they did the iPhone update and it was, it was all like sort of a white background and went to a dark background? Well, you can adjust that right here. You can also have your different languages, your voice recognition language, and the time, 24 hours, 12. And then energy display in percentage or distance. So this is kind of important. A lot of people leave it in percentage so you can see how much percentage of battery left they have. But for this video, I wanted to see you in distance so you guys could see how much mileage you could do in this car with the battery that you have. Next up is trips. And this is one of two places that you can find the odometer reading on the car. You see, most cars have it right here in this driver's display, but this one doesn't. You have to hit the trips and you gotta look all the way in the bottom and it shows you right there the odometer. Now it does show you a lot of other metrics that are important for an electric vehicle. So that's important for everybody else except for plaid owners because we don't care. We're just like foot to the ground. Wow, that's amazing. Foot to the ground. That's amazing. We're not really concerned about how much average energy we've used or how much distance we've traveled. Oh, we don't care about that kind of stuff because if we did, we'd buy the Model S. We wouldn't buy the plaid. So next up is navigation and navigation is pretty cool because nav is really so far compared to every other brand. You can adjust your volume here, you can adjust the automatic navigation trip planner, online routing, and then you can choose to reroute if it's more than 10 minutes. You can avoid ferries, tolls, and the HOV lane. But the display of the nav is really cool, and we'll get to that. This is just all the settings that I wanted to go through. Next up is safety. This is sentry mode. This is essentially putting all the cameras on when you park it. In case somebody walks with the car, it starts recording in case somebody breaks into the car next to you, or the car, this guy. Then you have your dash cam, and then you can obviously format the USB, which comes in the glove box with the car now. And then again, you have you can do all this stuff called cabin, cabin overheat protection. And that is basically, it maintains a temperature of under 40 degrees Celsius while parked up to 12 hours. But it doesn't work if your battery is not more than 20%. Then you can allow mobile access, your security alarm, your park assist chimes, and of course, the notorious Joe mode. Now, if you haven't watched another Tesla video from me before, Joe mode is essentially setting up the chimes when you open the door, it doesn't wake up the kids in the back. So apparently Joe complained about it, Elon found out about it, and then threw in the car because Joe was pissed that it would constantly wake up his daughter from sleeping in the back with this annoying chiming. Don't buy a Ford, Joe, don't buy a Ford. So service goes over the owner's manual that you can type in and find all the details you need to find out about your Tesla Plaid. And then you got towing, wheel configuration, notifications, camera calibration, and then a factory reset. And also a wiper service mode. So wiper service, basically replacing the wiper modes, you hit the button and it'll come up halfway and then you can clean it. So I highly advise anybody that lives up north, anywhere with a lot of snow, to have wiper service mode on because when you are cleaning the snow off your car, it's sort of really tucked underneath. Like the wipers hide really, really low. So you want to have it up, you can clean your windshield really easily, and then off you go. And next up is software. Again, very simple stuff. Obviously, there's a ton of over-the-air downloads and software that this car does, and it tells you the name, 
accelerate. And the best part about it, it tells you that's a plaid. There's nowhere on this car besides the back that tells you this car is a plaid besides that. Even when I ordered the car and I was waiting for the build order, it would say Model S. And I was like, I kept emailing them and I'm like, hey, did I order a plaid or did I order a Model S? They don't really give you that clout that you're looking for when you spend the extra $80,000 on a plaid. The rest of the features are pretty in depth in my other Model Y video. So take a look at that video to see a little bit more in depth because I can spend a ton of time on this screen. But there's an important piece that I missed right there and that was talking about regen. I cannot adjust the regen on this car at the present moment. It would be nice to adjust it. Now when the battery is very high, I'd say like 90, 100%, the regen is very low when I take my foot off the gas. But the regen is very high when I'm at like 30, 40 or 50%. It would be nice to adjust it, but I cannot do that in this plaid at the current moment. Now for the rest of the stuff, I'm not going to go too deep in because I've already done that in the Model Y video and the Model 3 performance video. But I'll take a quick breeze through it and let's talk about breeze. Let's talk about the HVAC controls. So again here I can, I can talk about the back. This is the rear stuff. And again I can do the heated seats right here. And again three increments in the middle back is awesome. And I can talk about the front. So in the front here I can shut it off. I obviously have all the buttons like everything else does. I do have the heated steering wheel plaid. So again, I cannot adjust three increments of the steering wheel. It's just simply one. And I have heated windshield right here. And again, you can see the display and it's nice that they actually put this is the plaid. This is not a generic Tesla. This is a plaid and I can move where I want the air to go. So again, same as the other ones, but if you have not seen a Tesla video before, this is probably the coolest thing to have on your Tesla. And you can do it both sides up or down. Now, one interesting thing is that you would think that they'd put a display on the passenger. Passenger displays are becoming a little bit more common. You saw that on our Jeep Wagoneer video, and of course the Ferrari A12 Superfast, you have a passenger side display. This appears to have a passenger side display when I look at it. It looks like it has a screen. Maybe it's coming in the future because that looks exactly the same as this, but I can't find any way to put on this passenger display. Now moving on, it does have tune-in radio. Obviously it does have Bluetooth and all the fun stuff, all the different streaming radio stations you can get. It does have the camera, which I can show you right here. So it does have nice clean. It's just that the camera is a little bit different. The side cameras have a different sort of color to them than the main camera. Not a big deal, but I really noticed that outside. I can notice there's a really purpley hinge with these two cameras here. Now other stuff, you can hit simply hit this button and then you have more options. You have your dash cam, a calendar that syncs in, your messages from your phone, and obviously it looks like it's an Apple product, so there we go, your messages, Spotify radio, satellite radio, and then theater, arcade, and toy box. So now, a cool part about this specific one is when I hit arcade, or sorry, when I hit toy box, I can add five custom sounds to, when I press the horn, listen to this. Yeah. Now these are the preloaded one, but I can add five. Now next up is DJ, check this out. That is the that is so cool. And then La Cucaracha. Anyways, that's basically the gist of it. Now obviously you can in the back you can have Netflix, you can have YouTube, you can watch all the stuff in the back, and of course you can watch in the front. So that's pretty Tesla-ish. That's all to do with the Tesla as a brand itself. As far as the plaid, hmm, nothing crazy. This is Model S. Model S does all the same stuff. Let's talk about the driver display. So on the screen, there's not a whole lot to talk about. It basically tells you who has a seatbelt on and who doesn't. It also shows you how much mileage you have left with the battery pack. You can have it in percentage, as I mentioned earlier, the outside temperature, park reverse neutral drive, the time outside, and then of course, like your high beams, and then your speedometer, which is probably the most important piece. Now you don't have your nav right in the center here. If you want nav, you have to basically move your eyes to the right. Now a lot of other brands do get a lot of slack when they don't have the nav in the driver's display. That Raptor we just reviewed, you will also see there's no way to get the nav on the driver's display. It's only on the center console. And people do complain about that. But in a Tesla, you can't get the nav right in front of you. It's all done on the right hand side here, which makes sense because it's freaking 17 inches wide. Let's test out keeping in your lane. So I hit this thing once, I got cruise control, I hit it again, and now it's just cruising for me. Don't touch anything and I'm cruising. Let's see how long this thing will run for with no hands very clear like the quality of these screens are just so good it shows there's a truck there god wind noise but don't worry the sound system is amazing 22 speakers this something sounds awesome so this is what this car is designed for like right here just comfortable smooth and i'm still in the most hardest adaptive suspension setting now i'm in comfort let me raise this bad boy up to medium and voila i'm just chilling this is great look how clean that is apply slight turning force to steering yoke okay there we go there you have it. 
So I didn't spend the money on the 10,600, it was cheap. I figured I'd just wait for the subscription model to kick in and then I can decide whether I want to have automatic driving until I, not really, because I like to drive, so. What do we do now, guys? What do we do now? Just talk to each other, I guess, because the car's doing its thing. So the way I'd categorize this car right now is this is an electric Dodge Demon. Makes a ton of power straight, can barely corner. Yeah, you kind of feel kind of a bit strange. The steering is a little bit weird, so maybe they'll fix that. So maybe Elon will pump some more software in this thing to make it a little bit more German. You know, a little bit more like confidence driving at high speed. A little bit more cornering ability. I don't know how he's gonna fix the brakes, but hey, maybe he's gonna, maybe gonna step in a little bit sooner when you touch the brakes, I don't know. Or maybe just spend the money and get proper brakes. Spend the extra six to 12 grand it's gonna cost because I saved that money by not getting the 21s. So maybe you gotta do that, who knows. It'll be interesting. There'll be a lot of toys to add to this thing. I'm really pumped for that. So we're gonna have a lot of drag race videos. I hope you guys are excited to watch the rest of the plaid series because they're gonna be a whole bunch of plaid stuff. Excited to have it, excited to buy it, and hey, I'm a little bit harsh with it, but I just wanna tell you guys the honest truth of my experience with my 2021 Model S plaid. Thanks for watching, and as always, hey, it was like 50 minute video. Hopefully you guys are still watching, right? Thanks for subscribing.